Live FM. I'm your host, Ruben Wood, and today's special guest is James Worthy. What's up, what's up? What's up, man? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get right into the interview. What's that? Um, I know we've been trying to get this set up for a minute. I know, man. I've been waiting on you, bro. <laughs> I've been a little busy. I feel you, me too. I know. So, um, now you've been producing since 2004. Yeah. Um, so let, let's talk about that for a minute, man. How did you get into making music? Man, uh, that's a long story, but to kind of sum it up in a sense, uh, I'm from New York, from Queens, New York. Uh, my dad was a, a, a celebrity bodyguard, so that kind of gave me a chance to be around a lot of people. And um, I always tell this story uh, when I was about probably 10 or 11, I got a chance to meet uh, MJ in New York. Um, and that just kind of changed like a lot of stuff. And you know, I was like, it's a once in a lifetime type of thing, you know what I mean? So. That just kind of like, you know, gave me some reassurance that okay, you know, maybe the entertainment, the music industry might be something I really want to pursue in life. Um, so after that, um, got more into songwriting, just you know, just writing, writing songs and for local people, and then that kind of turned into production because I said, well, you know, I got some pretty good songs, but I need music behind it. Right. So that's kind of that kind of forced me to make my own music and, and really study what production is and you know, arrangements and melodies and, you know, all the technical stuff. So after that, um, I started working with a local artist producer for them and then that turned into me meeting um, a lot of industry people and just kind of soaking up the knowledge, you know, just going through stuff, experiences, and that's what made me who I am today. Right, okay, so that's definitely what's up, man. And that's even really inspiring because you did have the opportunity to uh, meet MJ in person yeah. and everything. So For sure. That's definitely what's up. Now, who was the first artist that you actually produced for? That first was? artist? Yeah. Indie or major? Major. Major. Uh, well, that's that's actually an a interesting question because, you know, anybody who's been a producer or a songwriter in the beginning, um, you don't know much about the business. You, you're excited to be around artists, and you're excited to be in the mix and be in the studio, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, long story short with me, uh, it was that and some, you know, just having bad contracts and not knowing uh, about publishing and not knowing about royalties and points on an album and all that. So uh, a lot of my work was uh, work for hire uh, in the beginning stage. So I would do all this work and not get credit, but get a, a certain amount up front. Um, so now, you know, all that straighten is now, but you know, I mean, I've had the chance to work with, you know, in the beginning stages, like Mike Jones, Paul Wall, uh, Young Bird, just the list goes on. Um, so that kind of really jump-started a lot mm -hmm. of stuff. That's definitely what's up, man. Um, so being that consistent, because it's not like you just got into this, you've been doing this, for some years now, yeah. um, and really you was doing it before the whole digitalization of right. the music industry and everything. So right. how would you say that the music business has changed from then to now? Uh, I mean, there's still a lot of techniques that are the same from back in the day, but everything is, uh, in, in consuming music, it's a lot more digital now. Like. I remember when Twitter at first came out, when I started using it, and, you know, it was still MySpace then, like it wasn't Facebook, it wasn't Instagram then, so a lot of it was like hand-to-hand -hand contact, you know, actually going up to the, to the label buildings and meeting with people and radio stations and all that. But now it's a whole total 360, like, you know, we're relying on data and numbers, and even though it's been that, but now you got all these DSPs to where we're, we're trying to analyze what the, the analytics are behind it to figure out who's listening, who's watching, where are they at, what time of the day are they looking and listening, you know what I mean? So I think that's what's new. And we've also, you know, kind of gathered, you know, a new way of um, reaching people. You know, like you could be at home and reach somebody in, in Africa that you never even knew you can meet before. It's just crazy. Right. So, also, since you since you are pointing that out, how would you say um, 
producers themselves some marketing questions. How would you say they can utilize the, the social media and the uh, digital platforms now to market themselves? Well, that's the key point is knowing how to market yourself. So you got to know who you are. You, you don't want to be somebody that is somebody else. You always want to have your own identity. You always want to have your own sound. You always want to have your own brand. And I see that a lot of times is people are so quick to jump on trends and, and you know other people's waves and it's, you know it may it may be cool for the time being but it's never gonna last because you didn't build that you know so I always tell people like build your own thing like build build your own clout so to speak you know because I mean for me I I can only speak for myself it's like for me I've never ever in my life been um, a clout chaser or somebody that's following somebody else. Like, never been that. I'm not with drama. I'm not with none of that. Like, I just, I want people to follow me, but in a pure way. Like, I want you to love the content, love the music, love the uh, inspiration that I'm bringing within my craft because I put a lot into it. I take it seriously. And, I mean, we, we in the music business, man, like, it's a lot of competition. Like, you gotta come up with some new stuff, man. Like, everybody wants to be an artist. Everybody wants to be a producer. Everybody wants to be a songwriter. But do you have what it takes? Right. And in order to find out if you have what it takes, you gotta study the craft. Right. That's true, too. And, I mean, you know, coming from you, because you've also worked on uh, some different television shows as well, like yeah. the BET and stuff yeah. like that. So uh, what was the experience like, you know, uh, doing Um, I mean, it was really dope. It's, it was really um, a great experience because it was dealing with not only music, but highlighting me as a musician. You know what I mean? Sometimes you don't always get that luxury on television. So I was really uh, grateful for that. And also grateful uh, working on other projects for television and film, you know, movies and TV shows and commercials and stuff like that. That's always great. Right, right. So, uh, what would you say? Who has a better payout? Would you say the better the, payout? The, the movies and the TV shows, or would it be um, working the artists? Well, you know what? I mean, every avenue can make money, mm -hmm. but it just depends on how you negotiate or how you monetize it. So, I mean, you can make a lot of money in film, but it's gonna take that one opportunity or that one role for you to really make that money you want. Same thing with television, same thing with music. If I have that one record, that's gonna set up everything else. So, that's kind of how I look at it, but I mean, everything is, you know, monetizable nowadays. You just, you just gotta know how to market. So, like, as far as with yourself, now you have a team of people that, that you work with and yeah. do a lot of different things for you. So, for somebody who's an upcoming producer, they trying to get into that whole field, what is the best advice you think you could give them? Um, study the greats. Study who are the artists in your genre. And sometimes it's hard to say because there's a lot of genre mixing in today's time. So it's kind of hard to even pinpoint what songs are in what genre. But, you know, if you're primarily an R&B producer or primarily a, a hip hop rap producer, you know, kind of study what was done before and not put your twist on it, but just kind of take some inspiration from that and figure out what works for you. So if you're comfortable with 808s, find out a different way to use 808s. If you're comfortable with bass lines, get comfortable in a different way using bass lines, you know, is your melodies gonna be different? Is your arrangements gonna be different? Like, certain voices sound better on bass lines than 808s. Some artists have different pockets. You know, some of them have different voices that, you know, differentiate from certain beats. Right. So it just, it just depends. And I always tell uh, producers too, find an artist to produce first. Because, you know, we in a, in a game to where like everybody's submitting to the same artist. Right, right. So, I mean, I mean, uh, it's just hard to say if you're gonna get placed or not. It's, and especially now, because artists have in-house teams. Right. And, and 
some some of them are uh, dealing with labels, so they have in-house producers as well. So it's like you're you're in a, a pool of thousands of other producers trying to submit to everybody. So you know, I would say produce an artist and 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 try to make that artist pop, and then once you got a record, you know, now you got some leeway. Right, I definitely agree with that. Um, so another question I do want to ask you too is. What current project are you working on? Because I know you do producing, but you also work on music yourself as well. Yeah, I'm also a recording artist. Um, actually, a lot of people don't realize, um, I was in a group in 2017 called uh, King's Times 2, myself and uh, another guy by the name of International Nova. And um, our debut single called Why For Me debuted at number 10 on Billboard as a debut, so we were really happy about that. And um, mid-2018, well, really before then, uh, probably top of 2018, um, I went solo. And um, I released uh, two singles that year, which did really well. So following up to top of 2019, I put out my debut EP called Blue Legion. Uh, solid body of work, um, more of an uh, R&B genre based, but um, you know, a lot of uh, infusions of other genres in there as well. Um, got Tony Terry on there, Houdini, Sona Relay, and uh, Kalina from Dirty Money on there. So, um, it's, as, as they say, it's critically acclaimed right now. So it's doing really well. We just cracked a million streams for the uh, entire body of work on there. Um, getting ready to chart on Billboard really, really soon. Um, we got a new video dropping uh, to the last thing called Move. That's the one with Houdini. Uh, we're dropping that video really soon, so I'm really excited about that. Okay, so what, okay, so you say you're dropping that really soon, so um, that's going to be the new single? No, actually, that's already been the single okay. uh, for a while now, so we're just getting ready to drop the video, and um, actually mid-August, um, I'm going to be releasing uh, an entirely new single called I Can Tell, which features uh, DJ Luke Nasty. Oh, okay, so yeah. make sure you put that in my uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you definitely don't get the exclusive, man. So it's it's a definitely a, a dope record, man, for the ladies, uh, for the radio, for the club. And I hate saying for the radio because it's I really don't classify music like that nowadays because we really don't know what radio is. Right, like right. you know, it's whatever the fans like. But um, it's it's a smooth record. It's a smooth record. Uh, shout out to Luke. That's my guy. That's definitely what's up. Yeah, shout out to Luke because I know yeah. him well. That's definitely what's up. Um, so moving forward then, you got the single getting ready to drop this month. Um, are you going to be working on a full album anytime soon or you just going to um, into producing? Right? Really, really right now, um, I haven't really been producing a lot. Um, you know, I got a lot of records that's getting ready to come out that I've, I produced already, uh, you know, a long time ago. But right now I'm just really focusing on artistry, uh, focusing on the next project. I'm putting out another EP uh, later this year. So. Um, just really focusing on that, focusing on the singles, the visuals, just building the brand. Um, so yeah, look out, look out for new music. All right, that's definitely what's up, man. So um, who would you say has been some of your biggest inspirations on your musical journey as a producer and as an artist? Biggest inspirations? Well, if we're talking about production-wise, uh, Q-Tip, uh, Timberland, Organized Noise, Quincy Jones, um, Pharrell. Um, I mean, it's, it's a lot of cats, man. <laughs> it's a lot of cats, but those are like the forefront. Um, you know, they've all opened up the envelope so much. Uh, as far as artistry goes, uh, I'm a big Houdini fan, big Tribe Called Quest fan, big Kanye West fan, um, Frank Ocean fan. Uh, I mean, there's tons of them, man. <laughs> I can go down the list, but I mean, if I'm forgetting the name, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man, shout out to everybody. All right, that's definitely what's up. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to switch the pace up. What you got? Um, some dope conversations with Ruben Wood. So I'm going to ask you five questions, a random questions off top. <laughs> what you got? <laughs> so first question is, what's the craziest thing you've done in your life today? The craziest thing? Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
Well, I'm afraid of heights, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm super afraid of heights. So I remember um, I was overseas one time and um, I'm at the top of this huge cliff. And for some reason, I'm, I'm, I'm a great swimmer. So, you know, we were already on a, on a huge boat. So, you know, we're getting off the shore. And um, I'm at the top of this huge cliff and for some reason, I just was not scared for some reason. And I said, you know what? Let me face this fear. So I jumped off that damn cliff. And, and it was like the most craziest thing ever, but the most exhilarating. Like, it was, it was cool. I was like, I wanna do it again. Like, it was crazy. Like, I went so deep in the water, it took me a while to get back up. up. Okay. But it was dope. <laughs> All right, so that, that, that is definitely crazy. Yeah, it's okay. a daredevil type <laughs> of crowd, right? right? I can't believe I did that. <laughs> so, the second question I wanna ask you is, um, you play video games? Yeah. Not as much now, yeah, but I did. I have. All right, favorite video game. Favorite video game? Uh, definitely, probably two K. Two K. Yeah, definitely two K. All right, that's yeah. definitely. What's up? Favorite food? Italian food. Italian food. Yeah. yeah. All right. If you from New York, you know we 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 eating slices all day. Right. All day. Okay. Gabby's New York. I need to go there. <laughs> um, what's one thing you cannot live without? I think I can't live without. That's hard, man. Just one thing. One thing you can't live without. Hmm. That's a hard one, man. Okay, we gotta, we gotta, we, we gotta analyze that, man. You talking about <laughs> materialistically, or you talking about just anything? I mean, it could be anything. Water, cause I, I'm a huge water drinker. To the day I die. Alright. Okay, last question. Um, mm -hmm. gotta think about this one. Gotta ask you <laughs> something. Gotta ask something kind of interesting. <laughs> so, um, what would you say? Because I asked you what's the craziest thing. Mm -hmm. What is the wildest thing that has been told to you by a woman? Well, to me, <laughs> to me, the wildest thing was, you know what, I'll take you through the story real quick. Okay. So I went on a date with somebody, this is years ago. Went on a date, and at, at the end of the date, the female tells me that I was too nice. And I said, too nice? What, is, what did that even mean? So she was like, yeah, you just, just too nice. I'm like, oh, so, you know, being a gentleman, opening doors, pulling your chair out, paying for your meal, you know, giving you some flowers, like, that's too nice? So I got to thinking. I was like, well, either she then got some messed up men in her life, or um, maybe I got the definition of uh, generosity mixed up. <laughs> I was confused that night. Well, I mean, I can definitely understand why, especially if somebody <laughs> tell you that, so. Yeah, I'm just like, what? Too nice. I don't know, ladies, y'all gotta, gotta clarify that. Yeah, we definitely need <laughs> some answers in the comments. For real, um, for real. What is too nice for a man for you if you're a woman? Are you going out, especially if you're paying for everything, we need to know what's going on I, with I that. I need answers, man. I need answers. <laughs> All right, so that's what's up. It's another segment of Dope Conversations with Ruben Wood. All right, 